guys, Sostein here. I'm gonna be doing a sewing room tour today in my new to me house. This is a really, really old house. It's actually over 200 years old. If you were following me on Instagram, you'd know that it has been kind of a disaster for the last three and a half months. Uh, we moved in and we immediately found out that only two out of 16 radiators in this house was actually getting heat. So we immediately moved out. Luckily, my in-laws were kind enough to take me in and I lived with them for the next 10 weeks while the house was repaired. Thank you so much to Carano Air for fixing everything. Uh, they are not pot sponsored or anything. I just want to give a shout out because they were amazing. They even hired cleaners at the end to like, which is crazy, like it's unheard of. Um, what I ended up doing was it was going to cost so much money to fix the radiators that we actually removed all of the radiators and put in vents in the floor. So now we have an HVAC system for, in any case, the house is now fixed. It honestly is so amazing and I've only really lived in here for about a week, so, so much of this is undone, but I kind of just want to give you a little tour. This is my new sewing room. As you can see, it is, it has a table. So my old room, if you recall, had a 60 by 100 inch table. The 60 inches wide is absolutely necessary because, you know, that's most bolts of fabric are at least 54 inches wide. Occasionally there's some 45, but that's more like quilting fabrics. Sewing and upholstery are usually about 54 to 60 inches wide. So 60 inches to me was like, I, it has to be at least 60 inches wide. I know a lot of people have done 60 by 60 inch tables. I do like them to be a little bit longer. I'm about five foot one and from my neck all the way to the floor plus a train can go all the way up to about 70 inches. So my last uh, table was actually 60 by 100 because I thought that I was gonna use the whole thing. And I very rarely hit the 100 inch. I think the closest I ever got was my Moulin Rouge skirt. And that was like 75 inches. I never really hit past that. This time, considering that this is a much smaller area to work with because we are in Jersey and no longer in St. Louis. Um, St. Louis, the land was cheap. Houses were huge. I did shrink it down. So this one is uh, five feet by six feet. So it's a lot smaller, but on the other hand, it still does everything I needed to do. Ideally, I if I could have, I was gonna get a 60 by 80 inch table. However, um, I tried to get a custom laminate and they, uh, Lowe's quoted me a number. And then when the people came to do the measurement, they it was the exact same size. They weren't gonna do anything different. And they actually quoted me a number that was $1,000 more than the quoted number. And I was like, I can't afford that. So I thanked them kindly for the time, paid for their time. And then I went with two, a pre-made kitchen countertops that were six feet by three feet, put them together. And as you can see, there is a little hole here. Um, there is a gap. It's not the end of the world though to me because I have that cutting mat for, so for snags over there, it's that green mat over there. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty wide. So it actually covers up everything. And it's actually sitting on top of a couple of Ikea calyxes. Now the Ikea calyxes here are, as you can see, there's a four by two there and a four by four. And then there's of course the four, two by two right here. I put a couple of drawers in, but other than that, it's really kind of um, just filled with bins from Target. It does have an original fireplace. No, the fireplaces don't work. I cannot afford to fix them to get them to work. Do not give me suggestions. I don't have any budget left to fix this house anymore. But um, this is not a, an original piece from the 1800s. Like this is clearly a more modern piece that they put in later. So I didn't really feel guilty putting two hooks in here so that I could put my ginger cutting scissors in here and the best part is it's really easy to put them right back in and these are this is the built-in it's eventually going to be a full wall of fabric um, right now I'm still kind of getting adjusted I need to buy a ladder for this area so that's gonna come later my sewing machine on the other hand is right here by the window because I do love sewing by the window I'm I kept my antique singer table over there. Have that blank space right up there on the wall on top of the fireplace. I do eventually plan on putting a giant picture of the swing up there to kind of make up for the fact that I can't really put a mural in here. Now, the really fun part about this room and the reason we bought this house is because I love having a sewing room. I love having an area that I can craft with my family. So my husband's um, miniature painting desk is there and we have the dream box of his 
over there in that part of, of the room. And that way he gets all his miniature storage, which actually doesn't take up nearly as much space as sewing, believe it or not, because I can't think of many uh, hobbies that do take up as much room as sewing. And so the dream box can open and he has all of his miniature supplies right here, handy and ready to go. I have my son's play area right here. And we have a bunch of his toys and along that wall too. And that way he can, I can kind of watch him while he's playing. There's my robot, there's my Futurama painting that I painted, and there's my dog pictures, and we have a TV and a couch so that I can sit and sew and also watch TV while also being having my sewing table over there. So I can theoretically watch TV while I craft, as can my husband, and it just kind of works really well as a space for all of us. So this is my embroidery room, as you can, as you can see, I have two machines. Yeah, and so I recently just got this new one. This is my old one. There's over 40 million stitches on this machine, guys. And th this is a new one. And I really like this because this means that I can work on, say, both halves of the frock coat at once so that I can really cut down the amount of time. So for a frock coat that I spend about 300 hours embroidering, I can theoretically do that in 150 hours. So. It's so far, I actually really love having both. Right now, I'm making enjeans or um, the sleeve ruffles for 18th century dresses here on this machine. And I am sewing a sample for Matt's court suit, possibly for Paris. I don't know if I'm gonna finish in time, but it's really fun to think about. So I'm gonna pretend I'm gonna finish it in time. We'll see what actually ends up happening um, on this side. And I have this beautiful orange fabric that I was going to make for his because I've always wanted to use this fabric for something. So anyways, that's what I'm working on here. It can get really loud, which is why I kind of love having this in this room. There are double doors that I can actually close so that it can reduce the sound, but this sound has not been edited. This is what it actually sounds like with both machines running at the same time. As you can see, it is very, very loud. Now, for those of you who are curious about my other hobby, which is gaming, I wanna show off my gaming room slash dining room. And I'm just turning it, the camera 180 degrees, and now we're in my gaming room. So this is a wormwood table. It is a, our dining room table and it is also a gaming table, meaning the top can be lifted off and it has a velvet surface on which you can play games and it makes it really easy to do so. It was definitely um, our splurge of the last five years. We absolutely love it. The table works beautifully. And you know, it's I really like that we can store the game halfway in the middle by having the table sink down below and then we just put the table on top, eat on here, and then we could put, put, take it off and play again whenever we want. In actuality, do we do that that frequently? No, when we're gaming, we're gaming, and when we're eating, we're eating, but I really do like that this table can theoretically be used for both. We have a barrister bookcase and that where we store our miniatures, and it's been really lovely. Um, if you're curious, those are my collection of animal bags, because I love bags shaped like animals. I, I'm like obsessed. So for instance, this is the platy purse. You can, has a, it has a really huge compartment. The mouth is a coin purse, as you can see. The wombat, and also huge. It actually is so big, it easily fits my normal size wallet, my cell phone, keys, um, usually a couple of like, like a snack or two for Malcolm. And it makes me the most popular mom when I pick him up from preschool. So I am all about this life. I'm supposed to be getting the Crocagator pretty soon as well as some others cause I can't stop pre-ordering. So once this thing fills up, I will, it's a big question on where I'm gonna be storing the rest, but we'll figure out that problem as I get there. That's the kitchen there, but I'm not gonna show you that because nobody really cares about my kitchen, I don't think. And of course, my sewing room is here. I just really love this whole room and this whole setup because being able to craft together as a family, I think is really important for my marriage and everything. Now, if you're just curious, I am working on a couple of things right now. That pink thing right there is actually my Frances that I made a mock-up of before I go and start my final one, which is the one for Versailles this year, because I will be going to Fête Galant, if at all possible, and I don't get sick. And of course, that gold fabric right there is going to be the final gown. But 
that is a long way coming. Um, I'm also working on the Felicity Pocket, which I digitized the Felicity Pocket, which is based on an extant from the Colonial Williamsburg collection. So I've also been working on that. Anyways, uh, that's my video on a little update on my life. I've moved to Jersey. I've gotten a new job. I finally have heat. I've moved in and I'm starting to slowly set up my sewing room and get my life back in order. Um, April, I am planning on another video, so I should hopefully get, have something cool going on at that point, and I'll see you then. Thanks, guys, for watching.